Hi guys, Winamute here, and today I'll be showing you how to make a low poly ferris wheel in Blender. So first we're going to start off by making the cart. Now the whole modeling part of this isn't too complicated, you know, you just start with the default cube. I'm just going to make it into sort of like a shell shape, I guess. You need to add a couple of mirror modifiers in places where they make sense. And cut up your model. Now, I'm aware you can use the solidify modifier to kind of fill in the shape, but I think extruding it will be easier for this case. So just make a couple of loop cuts and extend them upwards, uh, then we'll connect it to the top of the cart. Now, we're not going to worry too much about how this actually looks because they're not going to be too prominent on camera. These are going to be pretty small compared to the rest of the ferris wheel, and we're going to be focusing on the actual animation part. So if you want, you can follow, you can try to follow along, I guess, with the modeling process, but it's not too important in this case. So now we're going to add a bit of a bevel, and we're also going to cut out a door. I think this looks better, but again, I don't really think you're going to be able to see it in the final model. Make sure you fill in all your faces so you don't have like hollow sections, because those kind of look weird. Um, also, another sort of detail I want to add at the top is like a hollow cylinder. Uh, so one way to do this is by just, I guess, using a cylinder. Another interesting way is by using the solidify modifier and deleting the faces. And there you go, we have kind of a hollow tube. Oh, yes, but make sure that when you join objects, um, the parent object or the one like in bright orange that will have all of its modifiers applied to the other one, and the child object will lose all of its modifiers. Now we want to add a circle for the ferris wheel, and make sure you think about how many carts you want to have. I'm going to have 16, uh, because that's a, I think that's a reasonable number. And okay, so animating this poses a couple of challenges. If you think about doing this normally, it, it's a fun problem to try to solve if you want to try to do it yourself, um, but here's one way of attaching objects in this sort of non-linear um, kind of gravity-based animation system. You could try using physics. That would probably go as well for you as my physics exam did for me. Um, so yeah, we're going to do this. So we have an empty, and we're going to have that at the top pin of our ferris wheel cart. Then we need to take that empty. Um, and we need to take our cart and we need to select copy rotation, sorry, copy locate, <laughs> it's copy location. Um, so we'll just copy the location of the empty and that way we don't actually have to worry about like the actual object rotating along with the ferris wheel because that would look pretty weird. And now an easy way to do this is by, um, now make sure when you're duplicating these, you use Alt-D, not Control-D, because Alt-D instances it, so each of the cards will have exactly the same properties, like the materials and things, and modifiers of the original. So if you change one, you'll change all of them, which is actually pretty handy. That also means the parents will be kept over, and then you won't have to do this thing every time. So this part's a little bit tedious, you just need to make sure that um, each of your pins is roughly at one of the vertices of your circle. And if you choose a circle with not too many vertices, you should be able to spot them pretty easily. If your circle has like 128 points, you might have a bit more trouble. Alright, so now uh, we're going to make another circle, and this is going to be the actual like frame, or at least the outer rings of a ferris wheel. So this is just going to be a normal circle. Uh, kind of extruded inwards and a bit outwards, so we have some sort of 3D ring. It's a pretty simple process. We can also mirror this so we don't actually have to do it again, and since the origin is at the center, it's going to mirror across the origin, and then we have this perfectly symmetrical shape. Now, I'm going to try something here with a Bezier curve. So one way I thought of making the struts for this ferris wheel was to parent them and attach them to a curve. However, um, in Blender, using the follow curve does not work 
particularly well and it requires very precise um, orientation of your um, of your curve and your object to be attached to it and you'll see that in a moment and you can also see that this ferris wheel is working properly and all of the objects are rotating appropriately so this is going to be one of the pins that goes through the hollow hole at the top of the ferris wheel so what we need to do is make this match the length of the rings make it a bit less so it doesn't stick out and there we go And now, if you're wondering why we didn't actually make this a part of the actual card structure, uh, I'll show you why in a bit. So to duplicate this, we want to use the array modifier. And now you could just make an, a ladder shape yourself, I guess, but that would be kind of tedious. Also, you want to make sure it doesn't cut through the ferris wheel because that's kind of uh, not realistic looking. And there we go. Now you can make another array of this, and then you can try to make this attach um, to the curve so it will like spin around it, but you'll see in a moment why that's not going to work so well. Alright, so that's a lot of warping. Um, it's not remotely on the right axis. And I really have no idea how to fix this, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, if you have any idea, maybe you can leave it in the comments, but I think it would be better in this case to do this manually, which is what I'm going to do in a moment. You can try fiddling around with this, uh, like playing with the rotations and things and seeing if this will actually work for you, but I kind of doubt it. And plus, if you have not too many cards, this shouldn't be too difficult. So I'm just going to invert it so that the bottom of the ladder, which is going to be sort of um, hidden anyways, so we're just going to invert it and we're going to rotate this around the origin. Now, if you can do math, then um, if you can do math like faster than me, perhaps you want to try not using a calculator and figuring out how many of these struts you need. I have 18 points I need to bridge across the 360 degrees. Um, took me quite a while to figure out how many degrees per strut. Apparently it's 22 and a half. Uh, so yeah. So you just want to do this. You can. You don't have to duplicate all of them individually, and you also want to use Alt-D for this as well, because all the struts should be about the same. And that will, sure, that will ensure that they're all the same instance. Next, you want to take all the struts and parent that to a master ring. So I'm just going to call like that circle we used initially just as a guideline, our master ring, and everything's going to be parented to that, so they all spin together. Okay, now we have the the hub, I guess, of the spokes. So you want to scale it down, and this is just going to be in the middle of your whole object. You can play with the geometry of this a bit. I don't think it's too important. It's not going to be uh, a big part of the model. Uh, I'm going to inset this a little bit, try to make some uh, slightly interesting geometry, but I really don't think it's too important. Then we need to make, um, again, I have no idea what any of these things are called, I'm just making it up. So we have these legs, I guess, of the ferris wheel. So we're just going to take like rectangular prisms and scale them up, about like that. And we're just going to have one on each side, um, rotated roughly 90 degrees around the middle to make like an upside down V shape. Um, but yeah, it's not too complicated, so just make two of them, one on each side, and then rotate both of them. You might have to drag them a little bit because their origin is not going to be posed exactly correctly, so you probably need to move them a bit by hand and do a bit of manual adjustment. Alright, so it's looking pretty much like a ferris wheel, and it actually moves like one too, which is pretty cool. So now we're going to set up the environment. We have this hexagonal base, and a quick tip, pretty cool way to make some regular polygons is all you have to do um, is just make a circle and then specify the number of edges to something low. Polygon, uh, a hexagon like this is six, obviously. Um, and then we'll make like a ground plane, I guess. 
We'll try to position the camera uh, in an interesting way, and this might take some experimentation. I don't know what would really look good for you, but um, at first I thought this top-down angle was good, but uh, then I realized like the Ferris wheel would actually be quite a bit out of focus. I'm just going to give everything this like pretty flat red uh, material because I don't really want this to be too complicated of a model. I think just a bit of red and black uh, would contrast pretty well. Now having this camera at a jaunty tilt kind of uh, makes me feel a bit motion sick, so that's not a good idea. For this back panel, we want to add a bit of bevel to the corner, and then we have uh, a smooth a smooth thing at the end. Yes, and now lighting. So a couple of area lights should do the trick. You don't need too much. I would suggest just going with one. I tried going with colored things. Uh, and you'll get a chance to see how all of this looks, but really what my final design is, which is just a couple of white um, area lights uh, that highlight the upper right portion of the ferris wheel, I think that would look the best. This setup is a bit too complicated and kind of confusing to the eye, so it's not ideal. Also, when you're doing this, you want to keep in mind the size of your whole structure. Now, if it's too big, then the lights in Blender aren't really configured to work with like super huge objects. So what's going to happen if your ferris wheel object is super big uh, is that you're going to have to scale up the light intensity to like a hundred thousand and that's not ideal. Let's best keep it um, something manageable. Also don't add a sunlight because this will happen and I don't think it adds anything. It just makes everything look a bit flat. Of course that has to do with the angle I'm setting it at but um, I think area lights in this case should do quite enough. Going with too many colors like this, um, I'm trying to go for something like a complementary color scheme. This just looks a bit too jarring. Um, it's not really a good idea. So we're going to start again. So again with the base. This time we're going to just have a plain old front on view. I'm just going to go with a single area light. Now, a lot of this experimentation is what's going to uh, really make your model look good at the end. So just play around with the lighting settings and see if you can find something you like. Now, this sort of view looks kind of paper crafty, and I think that looks pretty good. You want to make sure to turn down your background brightness. Um, just have it set to some sort of gray color. You don't need to have it too bright. And also, having this sort of concentrated light looks a lot better than having like a really wide flat light. So we'll do the same beveling trick to have a smooth corner uh, as our backdrop. Make sure to shade this thing as smooth also. And we'll give it um, a pretty normal gray material, a bit reflective. Notice that if you have it too reflective, you can actually see the area light, which is not what you want. Uh, so you have to turn up the roughness just a little bit, and then we'll turn it down to a nice gray. So there we go. We have a lot of contrast in the scene, and I think that helps a lot. We want to add a, a bit of a base for the ferris wheel just to ground it a little. We'll make it the same color. And I think it's about time that we animate this thing. So you want to select your master ring, which everything is connected to. And what you want to do is, well right now since all of my um, axes are kind of screwed, you should probably apply the rotation. If you don't want to do that, just make sure you find an orientation that um, you can just rotate on one axis. Then you want to go in the object properties at frame 1, set the rotation to 0, and at frame whatever number you want, set the rotation to 360. Then you want your final frame to be one frame less than what your 360th um, degree is, and you want to also set the interpolation to linear so it doesn't speed up, and you can do that by hovering over the timeline and hitting T. This is also good for all sorts of like turntable things. I'm going to switch this to Eevee because uh, I actually think Cycles and Eevee don't have too much of a difference here. I don't really need motion blur or caustics or anything. So Eevee should work fine for me. I might add another reddish light for interest. 
Might not be super necessary, but who cares? Looks alright. I'll have some indirect lighting in the background. It doesn't make too much of a difference, and I kind of like the way that shadow looks on the background, so I'm going to try to bring it more into focus. Alright, it's looking pretty good. We can also turn on freestyle and we'll have this cool uh, borderlands like outline thing. And the rest of this video is just going to be a couple of interesting effects. So I'm going to put a bit of depth of field. This might blur out the shadow a little bit, but that's alright. I just want to focus the viewer's eye on a certain point of the mesh. I'll just have it focus somewhere in the middle. And we also definitely want to add bloom. We add bloom to everything in this channel. Alright, seems to be working. Now I'm going to add another layer of glare on top of this because that's how much I like it. So, there, we'll brighten it up with just a bit more. And now, it's about now that you can probably send it off to final render. I'm just going to make a couple more tweaks, have this base mesh, um, the base of the ferris wheel a bit above ground, maybe just tweak the size a little bit. I think changing that to a hexagon wouldn't be too bad, but it's looking alright right now. I'm going to try to make try to make the background a little bit bluish, but um, now's a good time to point out changing the background in Eevee doesn't actually uh, change the lighting of your scene, which is something I just learned. I'm going to also try some volumetrics here. Um, this is not going to look very good, so feel free to not do this, but you can get an interesting um, like foggy light effect on it. I don't know if you want that because then you have that light hovering in the middle of nowhere and that looks a bit jarring. Yeah, so we don't want two lights because that would kind of screw up the point of having this contrast. So I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and you'll consider subscribing to my channel at some point because it takes a lot of work to make these videos, and I actually have a final exam tomorrow. So yeah, um, if you'd subscribe, that would help me out a lot. I'd really appreciate it. So if this video has helped you, um, well, that's great, and that's what I wanted it to do. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.